The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler, rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And remember, let every traffic signal remind you, with new signal gasoline, you do go farther than ever. Look for the familiar big yellow and black circle sign that identifies those popular signal service stations in seven western states from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, Three Times a Sinner. Lydia Hunter stood alone in the kitchen, watching the coffee bubble in the electric percolator. She knew Gerald would want his coffee when it was over. He always did when anything excited him. And she reasoned quite correctly that nothing excites a man more than being told by his doctor that he's going to die. The attack had come in the early evening, while Gerald was seated at the organ playing a Bach fugue. The music had suddenly stopped... She'd run from the library into the study to find him unconscious on the floor. She'd call Dr. Farmer, and then it made Gerald as comfortable as possible until the doctor arrived. Everything Gerald could expect from his dutiful wife. She stared down at the coffee, bubbling in the glass top of the percolator, waiting. Then... That was just like him. The examination was over, and he was back at the organ again. She filled his coffee cup and hurried to the study. Ah. There you are, Lydia. Just in time to celebrate Dr. Farmer's prophecy of my death. Oh, and coffee. My obedient wife is bringing me my coffee. No coffee for me, thanks, Lydia. I must be going now. But it's raining, Doctor. You see, Richard, I've implied to my wife that I'm dying... and she immediately goes into a report of prevailing weather conditions. Tell me, Doctor... Is Gerald just being dramatic, or is there something seriously wrong? Gerald is a sick man, Lydia. And I don't recommend too much of that coffee. Oh, nonsense. Coffee's my mainstay. Then it's true. Oh, Gerald. Oh, Gerald. Oh, come, come, Lydia. (laughs) Dry those crocodile tears. They stain your makeup. Furthermore, you know you're deliriously happy. Why, just think, I can slip off at any moment now. Don't talk like that, Gerald. It may take years, old man, if you take things easy. Cut out drinking and smoking entirely, of course. Well, I've got to be running along now. I'll see you to the door, Doctor. Oh, really, Lydia? Don't you think you can find it after all these months? We don't keep changing around, you know. Good night, Gerald. Remember, you have as many years as you want. It's up to you. Of course, Doctor. It really is serious, Richard. Nothing to be alarmed about. No vigorous schedule or anything like that, though. He can't bear a quiet routine. You'll have to, poor beggar. You sound sorry for him. I am. And I wish you could make your pity sound more convincing, Lydia. Oh, he never believes me anyway. He's always been like that. Look at the rain. Yes. When am I going to see you again? Soon. That's all? Just soon? He's suspicious enough as it is. He's bitter and hurt. You've disappointed him as a wife, perhaps through no fault of your own, but he is disappointed and bitter. Oh. That can make a man unscrupulous. So be careful. I don't understand. I won't say any more, Lydia. Just be careful and be honest with him. Take good care of him. He needs you, and you owe it to him. 
Good night. Good night, Richard. Richard! Yes? I love you. Oh. Yes, Mrs. Hunter? I didn't know you were here, Martha. Were you going? Mr. Hunter told me I might go, ma'am. Well, I'd rather you stayed a while. You made him say that. I don't know, ma'am. I'd better see him. Well, Lydia, that was a long farewell. Why did you tell Martha to leave for the night? Is it difficult for you to understand that I might like to be alone with you? But surely, Martha... Martha has a perceptive eye and a very sharp ear, Lydia. You'd be shocked at the things she knows. Interesting creature, Martha. She has a sort of uh, feudal loyalty to the master of the house. You haven't drunk your coffee, Gerald. Lydia, since you and I are not even friends any longer, would you consent to a divorce? Leave you now. After Richard's diagnosis tonight? That was important to you, wasn't it? Why, of course. It was important because now you know that soon, perhaps even tonight, you'll be a wealthy widow, free to marry again. Gerald, must we go on talking like this? No, not at all, my dear. But I know that you're awaiting my death. Oh. And that makes me feel as though I were loitering. I don't want to borrow time, a few weeks, a few months. I don't want to borrow your affection, kisses you don't mean, a few soft words of phony solicitude. Oh, really, Gerald? I don't see why I have to I don't stand want here to and borrow listen. anything, my dear. And I have a way. Gerald, where did you get that bottle? It, it's marked poison. Yes, yeah, quite a coincidence. It is poison. What are you going to do? You mean, what have I already done? As you see, there's precisely half a bottle. While you were gone, I poured the other half of my coffee. I'll never taste it. It's supposed to be like adding sugar. All I have to do is lift it to my lips like this and... <laughs> uh, I was hoping you'd stop me. You realize what will happen if I drink this, yet you stand there watching, letting your little dreams multiply. Well, I won't disappoint you, my dear. I shall drink it. Like that and sail off happily on a requiem of Bach. Yes, a requiem, Lydia. Appropriate for the occasion. Tested in the crucible of time. You can hardly believe it, can you, Lydia? Here it is, happening before your very eyes. You hardly know what to think. All you can do is stand there, speechless, staring at him as he plays on and on. Then... It's happened. At long last, all those wretched years are over and he lies there slumped across the keys. You stifle an impulse to laugh. You've got to be shocked, Lydia. You've got to call Martha and go through with it. Martha! Martha, come quickly! What's the matter? Something has happened to Mr. Hunter. Is he ill? Oh, I'm afraid it's more than that. He's dead. I know it. <laughs> Please, please, Martha. You've got to get hold of yourself. So soon. The doctor no sooner told him. Please, than... Martha, please. please. Come on. <laughs> Gerald! <laughs> Mr. Hunter! Oh, Mr. Hunter! Oh, here they are. My servant and my bride. My servant weeps bitter tears over my corpse, but my wife, oh, hers have been lost. The woman who does not blush also does not cry. My dear, you have disgraced your sex. With the prologue of Three Times a Sinner, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange tale by The Whistler. Today being April 1st, I'd like to bring you this timely warning. April showers bring May flowers, but they also bring accidents. Here's what I mean. Of the deaths caused by autos, one out of five occur when roads are wet or slippery. One out of five when driver's vision is obscured. Fortunately, precautions can be taken to help prevent these two types of accidents. For instance, tires that are worn smooth tend to skid more readily. But a deep, heavy retread job, the kind signal gasoline dealers are prepared to give your tires, will restore their grip on the road, help you stop more quickly. 
And if a worn windshield wiper is leaving streaks across your vision, Signal Gasoline Dealers will install a fine new Rainmaster blade while you wait. So next time you're at your neighborhood Signal Gasoline Dealers, have your tire tread and your windshield wiper checked. You'll feel a lot better knowing your car is prepared for any kind of weather. And it may help save a life. Possibly your own. And now, back to the whistler. So, Gerald had his little joke, didn't he, Lydia? Watching you out of the corner of his eye as he slowly raised a cup of coffee to his lips. Putting it down for a moment to tantalize you a little more. Raising it again. Chuckling to himself when you couldn't keep the eagerness from showing in your face. Yes, Lydia. It was Gerald's little joke. He's made a fool of you, hasn't he? Forced you to show your hand. To come right out and tell him you want him to die. The next morning at breakfast, you're tense and silent watching Gerald munch happily on his buttered toast as he reads the morning paper. Uh, have some more coffee, Lydia, darling? No. Oh, come now, dear. It's perfectly all right. <laughs> Made it myself. Not a drop of poison in it. Will you be quiet? <laughs> oh, Lydia, Lydia. You're such a comfort to me in my last hours. The beautiful, dutiful wife offering peace and consolation to her lord and master in his declining days, giving freely of her strength. I've had all I can stand, Gerald. Now, that's enough. Very well, my dear. There's a half bottle of poison on the shelf in the medicine cabinet. Oh, here. Let me butter you a piece of toast. I'm not hungry. When are you going to kill me, my dear? Oh, uh, pass me the marmalade, will you? Thank you. Gerald, why did you do it? You, um, didn't answer my question. When are you going to kill me? I... I can't stand this any longer! Sit down, Lydia. There. That's better. <laughs> I'm very happy about last night, you know. Yes, it brings things right out into the open. I've known for years that the only thing you wanted was my money. Awfully good marmalade, won't you have some? What did you do with a half bottle of poison that's missing, Gerald? I poured it into the fireplace. Still half left, though. Ought to do the job quite nicely. I signed for it at the pharmacy myself, if you're wondering. Told them it was for the moths. So, you see? It's all ready for you, Lydia. Any time you feel in the mood. What do you want me to say, Gerald? Well, nothing, Lydia. Very well. I'll go. Where? I have an appointment at the hairdresser's. Oh, um, Lydia. Yes? Give Dr. Farmer my regards, will you? I tell you, Gerald was tempting you, Lydia. But why, Richard? I don't see... By you. pretending to be dead, he gave you five minutes of being a widow... He wanted you to enjoy that feeling. At the same time, he's shown you how simple it would be to kill him. Practically put poison in your hands. Now he wants you to kill him with it. He wants to die, don't you see? No, I don't. It's very simple. He wants that death on your hands so you'll die with him. Oh, I can't believe that. Not even of him. He'll hang on until you're desperate. But be careful. Don't let him trick you into it. Into what, Richard? Murder, darling. Murder. So you go home, Lydia, and determine to wait him out. He can't last long. There's no point in thinking about it anymore. Time will take care of everything. Get your mind off it, Lydia. Don't think Murder, about it darling. anymore. Murder. Murder, darling. Murder. The words keep Murder. coming back like the thought of a new toy to a child. And you can't surrender like a child and turn to thoughts of other new toys. Murder is the only toy you want, isn't it, Lydia? 
As the days pass, it keeps returning unconsciously. The bottle on the shelf in the medicine cabinet, half full. Bought in Gerald's name, flaunting its power at you every day. Murder, darling. Murder. And finally, the night comes when you can't resist it any longer. You go into the medicine cabinet and take the bottle, hold it tightly in the palm of your hand, and walk back into the kitchen. When the coffee's done, you pour a cup and add the contents of the dark little bottle. Uh, no sugar, Lydia. Gerald has told you the poison is sweet. Now, a little cream. That's it. You're ready now. The bottle is in your pocket, empty. You're ready for Gerald playing on the organ in the library. Ah, well, Lydia, is that really my coffee or some silly substitute? It's coffee, dear. You haven't had any in such a long time now. I'm sure Richard couldn't object. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> By George, I wonder if I'll recognize the taste. Of course you will. You know... What? I don't think I have a taste for it anymore. Oh, not that. The moment after your first sip, you'll be clamoring for more. Habit's funny, though. Once you've broken it, it's lost. Friendship, marriage, coffee. All the same. Oh, aren't you joining me? No, Gerald, I... I've been too nervous lately. Mind if I go ahead? Please do. What's uh, making you so nervous? Well, I, I don't know, Gerald. The past few weeks have been rather strange. Mm -hmm. Maybe the awful weather, eh? Well, cheer up, my dear. Spring's on the way. Your spirits can improve overnight, eh? I, I suppose so. Well, here goes. Good Lord, woman, what are you trying to do? Kill me? Kill you? What are you talking about? Oh, this is hot, Lydia. It's hot. Oh. Shall I cool it down for you? No, no. Oh, no. What's the trouble? Oh, it's my heart again. It's acting up tonight. Coffee might be bad for it anyway. Shall I call Dr. Farmer? Oh, don't be so anxious. I just better let this cool for a while. Gerald. Huh? Your coffee's getting cold. Oh, oh, yes. I forgot all about it. I say. Now, what is it? This is sweet. You sure you haven't put too much sugar in it? Oh, it's just your imagination. Hmm. I suppose. Ah, that does taste good. Now, my dear. Yes? You may put the empty bottle on the organ. What? That will make it look like suicide. If they don't find the bottle by my side, you'll be suspected of murder. Go on, put the bottle on the organ. I'm going to play for a while. As I wait for it. So you know. And you're not at all embarrassed. Not the faintest sign of a womanly blush. <laughs> you're the worst kind of sinner there is. A deliberate one. You sinned when you married me for my money. You sinned when I tried to commit suicide and you didn't attempt to stop me. And now you've sinned again because you tried to kill me. Do you honestly think, my dear, that anyone three times a sinner can escape punishment? In a few moments, you'll be dead, Gerald. Perhaps. What do you mean? The sweetness of the coffee betrayed you, my dear. I knew when I first tasted it, it was poison. But you drank it anyway. It is suicide, Gerald. You knew all the time. Oh, you foolish woman. <laughs> did you think that that was poison I'd left so conveniently in the medicine chest? Well, of course I did. Martha emptied the bottle weeks ago. I told her to replace the contents with syrup to see if you'd chance another attempt on my life. Well, you came through very nicely, my dear. <laughs> well, Lydia, he's trapped you again. But why? Why, Lydia? He wants you to die for his murder. You're sure of that. He wants to let you go through all the motions time and again, only to be frustrated at the last moment. He wants to build you slowly into a rage that will lead you to a crime of violence and a sure conviction. It's clear now, isn't it? Somehow you manage to keep calm, 
to appear unconcerned as he sits there playing on that infernal organ. You, uh, you don't look disappointed, Lydia. Why? Why aren't you disappointed? A minute ago, you thought I was going to die. Now I tell you that I'm not. You aren't disappointed. Why? Why aren't you disappointed? That smile, Lydia, why are you smiling? Wait a minute, you... You, you, you found out about the syrup, didn't you? You... You discovered it wasn't poison, didn't you? Lydia. Answer me. Answer me! Your coffee was too sweet, wasn't it, Gerald? Was it sugar? Or did you put real poison in it? Come and tell me, Lydia. There's a strange look in your eyes, Gerald, darling. It seems to be getting stranger by the minute. Sugar doesn't do that, does it? Lydia! You're taking a new tack, aren't you, Lydia? There's no poison in the cup, but there's a new, deadlier one that you hadn't counted on until now. The poisonous power of suggestion. He actually believes he's dying, and you're making the best of it. The real poison is sweet, Gerald. Remember? You're lying, Lydia. You, you didn't do it. But I did. Did you actually believe I'd let you make a fool of me again? When, when did you buy it? Yesterday. No, no. Getting hold of you, Gerald, inch by inch. No. Here's the bottle. Here, I'll put it beside you on the organ, just Lydia, as you give, say. Give me that bottle. Come to me. There. Yes, it's, it's empty. Good. Good. What? I, I told them you were trying to poison me. Gerald, what do you mean? The police, dear. The police. For once, you're a step ahead of him. So he told them you were trying to poison him. You can't resist now. You've got to laugh about it. Relieved, free at last. Gerald slumped over the organ keyboard, dead. So much simpler now. Death of a stroke. No poison, no suicide. No prying medical examiners. Uh, just one thing, Lydia. The bottle. That would cause suspicion, wouldn't it? When there's nothing to be suspicious about so you take the bottle from Gerald's hand, go down into the basement and crush it to tiny bits with an axe. There's nothing left now but a few fragments of glass. Then at long last... Yes? Richard. Richard, darling. Lydia, what's up? You must come at once, dear. Gerald is dead. Ten minutes ago. Lydia, you didn't... Of course I didn't. He died of a stroke, Richard. Oh, you must come at once. I'll be right over. Good. And Richard... Yes? I love you. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, a word about those big red and yellow signal billboards you've been seeing that tell you you now go farther than ever with new signal gasoline. Unfortunately, there isn't room on those billboards to tell the rest of the story, the finer performance in new signal gasoline that makes this good mileage possible. Here's what I mean. New signals quicker starting naturally saves gas. Signals smooth, fast pickup saves gas. And signals effortless anti-knock power that sends your motor purring up the steepest hills, saves gas. So you see, the features in gasoline that make driving a pleasure are the very same ones that add up to more mileage. That's why we say your speedometer is the best proof of gasoline quality. If you want the tops in performance from your car, the logical place to find it is the new super fuel that now helps you go farther than ever. New signal gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. (laughs) 
Well, Lydia, it's over and you're free at last. For the first time since you and Gerald were married, you're genuinely happy. You want to shout it from the housetops. Tell the world that Gerald is dead and you're free. That all his cruel cunning and practical jokes got him nowhere. That the trap didn't work. You almost wish Gerald were alive for a moment. Just so you could tell him. But instead, you must sit quietly in the living room in your black dress and wait for Richard Farmer to finish the examination. What a day. I can imagine. We'll have a drink in a moment. I could use one. Are you finished? Yes. Simple deaths can be just as troublesome as suicides and murders, you know. I can imagine. Lydia. Yes? Lydia, has it occurred to you that Gerald... uh, might not have died from a stroke. Of course not. Why? He might have committed suicide. Why, that's impossible. I was with him all last night. You didn't leave him? No, not for a moment. We talked quite a bit. But he might have slipped something in his coffee while you weren't looking. Oh, don't be absurd, darling. Please don't try to make a suicide out of this. I remember everything clearly. He clamored for coffee. I made it for him. He drank it, and soon after, he had the stroke. Why don't you want to let it go, then? The medical examiner from the police department. What? He was the man in the gray suit. Police? What have they to do with this? Lydia, he's analyzed the coffee cup and found it contained poison. But Richard! Martha! Martha! Yes, ma'am? Martha, Martha, tell me. About that bottle of poison in the medicine chest. You emptied that bottle, didn't you? You replaced the poison with syrup. I... I don't know what you mean, ma'am. I never touched the bottle. Martha! Martha, you... you... What's the matter, Lydia? He did it! It was a trick! Lydia, dear, don't worry about it. Everyone knows it's suicide. You just didn't see him pour the poison into the cup, that's all. And if he didn't leave the room as you say, then the empty bottle must be somewhere in the room with his fingerprints on it. That's all the evidence the examiner says they need. Just the bottle, don't you see, dear? Lydia. Lydia, what's the matter? You look white as a sheet. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal Dealer. This program produced by Gordon Hughes with tonight's story by Robert S. Brody, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Whistle is your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking, reminding you to look for those familiar yellow and black circle signs that identify those popular signal oil stations in seven western states from Canada to Mexico. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>